Did you ever hear somebody say to somebody else, oh yeah, or you go to the devil? Some people do. Our guest today is going to talk about that because it happened to him. But he's okay now. Welcome to WordNet. I'm your host, Jack Knight. Thanks for joining us. Go to the devil. What does that mean? That means I want you to go to hell. Or it means I want you to join this satanic cult that we have. Uh, we want you to be one with us and reject God and his angels and his saints. Well, it happened to our guest today, Deacon, Deacon, David Arias, who was born in Mexico and at 16 came to the U.S. without any friends, without any family really to help him. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having um, me. When you left Mexico, had you had a Catholic education? Were you going to church? Was your family supportive of that? Yes, I, I'm coming from a traditional Catholic uh, family. And just to clarify uh, something, um, I'm in the second year of formation of diaconate. The second year of diaconate? So uh, yeah, I'm second, second year of formation. How long will it be before you were? Three more, three more years. It's a long time. Yes, three more years. Not as long as a priest, however. Yes, yes, so uh, uh, I'm keeping walking in faith. That's great. <laughs> um, and you're working in a in particular church now? At Sacred Heart and Rancho Cucamonga. That's oh, my right. parish. Oh, neat. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now let's talk about you. So you come here as an immigrant. Did you come by yourself? No, actually what, what happened is um, my mother died when I was 16. Um, my mom was an alcoholic person. So, so she died of cirrhosis when I was 16. Um, two weeks later, my dad decides to send me with my sister to the United States. So I, I arrived to San Fernando Valley. I went to San Fernando High School. And like anything, you know, you start meeting the wrong people, the wrong crowd. And um, I found this guy who I was calling my best friend because he was there all the time for me. So probably what I was looking back then it was to belong to someone, to belong to to something, because so, so a group that would be supportive to you, that would accept you, and so forth. Yeah, because you know I was 16, so I was, you know, my mom was everything for me. So when I was 16, she died. So and then my dad decided to send me to the United States. So I feel like like an orphan. You know, I was like, I don't belong to no one now. Even though my sister tried to provide everything for me, you know, um, but she was working on night. Um, she was sleeping in date. So basically she was just providing me um, home and, and food. So um, I met this guy um, and he was there and he was introducing me to, to um, what the ending become a, a cult, a satanic cult. A satanic cult. Yes. That must have been a, a shock to your brain, being raised as a Catholic, and now you're exposed to this cult, but because of the influence of not having a real family support, and you have the support of this best friend, it was a, an easy transition for me. Did you have th thoughts about, no, I shouldn't do this? You know, the, the way it starts, uh, because obviously you don't start right away going to the, to the cult, you start little by little. So the way we start, uh, he was inviting me uh, midnight to play the Ouija board in a cemetery. Ouija board in the, the cemetery. Board. Yes. Sounds like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, um, you know, like everything, we was in drugs, alcohol, and everything. I was addicted for cocaine for almost five years. So when I was, when he invited me to the, to the, to the cemetery, I was in the influence of, of cocaine. So, in the beginning, when we start playing the Ouija board in the cemetery, 
a lot of things start happening around us. But um, the first thing I thought was like, okay, you know, it's, it's the coke, you know, it's, <laughs> it's playing with my, my, my brain. But um, eventually, you know, a lot of things were happened and they, it was really kind of scary. Um, and, but in, this, in the same way, it was kind of excited, you know, because I was like, wow, this is amazing, you know, things moving, um, hear voices, a uh, couple of things that are like, wow, this is fascinating. You know, I was young and, and, and stupid, if you want to call it, you know, because I wasn't knowing reality what I was getting myself into, you know. So, and then little by little, the, the, he invited me to what they call the underground parties. Um, these underground parties, and they're calling out undergrounds, is because they, making these, they make these parties um, far away, like in the desert, up, up there in the mountains, where nobody knows, only certain people. What happens there? What happens, you have everything, coke, um, alcohol, sex, um, any kind of sex you, that you can have. But on certain time on, of the night, um, everybody gets together and they start making a ritual. Um, and that ritual is when you become part of, and they kill animals. And what you need to do is drink the blood, and that means that you are accepting um, evil as yeah. you guide them. So, uh, and that's the way I start um, in, in my young, <laughs> yeah, did, did you ha have it any times uh, during that uh, the feeling separated from the church upbringing that you had, or was the transition one of feeling a need for something more than that, not accepting Satan as uh, an important person, but more the community? In the beginning was like accepting, uh, be part of something. Uh, because um, back then I was able to have money, to have girls, to have drugs, and in and, and, and the beginning it was like, okay, you know, I belong to here. But the more I was getting to, um, to the cult, you know, um, that part was getting away, and I was getting more into the darkness. Um, and that's when I become, um, during the process, I become a, a second level uh, priest of the of the cult. A second level, so a there's a hierarchy. Yes. In the cult. Yes, it's Tell like at the Catholic Church. It's uh, the uh, the Pope, uh, bishops, yeah. and so forth. That's the way it is in in in, 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 this, in the cult too. They have a priest, and then they have a high uh, high level priest who he he's the one who commands uh, a, a cult, and they do bigger rituals and they have obviously more power. Uh, when they say more power, they have more uh, demons on you. When I, was, um, when I was in the second level, I was, uh, I was cast with three, with three demons and about 40, 40 to 60 spirits. Wow. So I have the power. Well, back then I was able to move stuff to make it throw things away, to read people's mind, things like that. And not because my power is because the, the 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 demons were part of, of this now how situation. How long were you involved in that in the cult? About five years. And what made you say this is not for me? Well, in the ending, when I was um, in ready to become one of the highest levels of the priesthood, uh, one of the sacrifices that you had to do is killing a baby. Killing uh, a baby. Kill, killing a baby, yes. Yeah. So when, uh, when you left the cult, then you have uh, a new life. Yes. You're kind of reborn. Pretty much. Pretty Did much. you find yourself going back to the church at that time? Um, you know, I <laughs> the way I found Christ, it was uh, in a particular way because when I was uh, unable to do the sacrifice, um, I was getting um, kind of like a spell from the from the cult because I was failed to 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 do what it was required. But in the same way, I was you know getting um, bullying for the the cult. 
and I was getting in depression. So walking through the, uh, through the streets one day, um, I found a church open door to door and I, and I saw the cross in the middle of the church. And, and I was really brat because I screamed to Jesus and I said, okay, what, a, what, what you can offer to me? You know, he was offering me this, what you can offer, you know? And um, I remember the, that when that happens, I start crying, just crying like a little baby. And I didn't understand what happened, obviously, uh, but that was the answer of God telling me, now you coming back to, to me. And how did you start to do that? I start, um, back then, then I found, a, uh, actually, I, it was a guy who gave me a, a ticket to go for a youth congress. Um, back then it was Carismas and Misiones, or Karen's and Missions. And um, I remember this guy telling me, you know, here's the, here's the ticket, you should go. I said, no, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> so. Um, and suddenly he said, you know what, there's something in my heart that told me to, to give you the ticket. So here's the ticket. So he gave me the ticket. I ending went to the Congress. And, um, and when it was, I hear the preachings, I hear everything. And I was kind of desperate because I was like, I want to get out of here. But something was telling me, stay. So by the time that the Holy Hour came, when the priest walking with the Holy Sacrament, that's when the battle starts. That's when the real start of bars starts because, you know, it's, it was um, evil versus Christ, you know. And I start screaming and I start doing stupid things. And um, I remember they took me uh, to a room and, and a priest was there and he was praying for me to uh, try to call me and try to figure out what happened and then Little by little, um, the Lord was helping me to get out from, from the cult. Oh, this is amazing. Um, and of course, this is going on still. We'll be back in just a few minutes and to uh, talk with David a little bit more about his experience and his renewal. Do you want to fall in love with God? I'm sure we all want to. The book of Psalms contains the directions. Thousands of years ago, people like you and me talked to God out of the depths of their hearts, revealing an intimate love. Psalms are the expression of the faith in God by people around 3,000 years ago. God was not a mere abstract creator, but was present, involved, and a real person of power and emotions. Now, when we read or listen to the Psalms, we can know the intensity of this love. Entering into the influence of the Psalms, we can find a path to know and love God. To know more about the Psalms, you should get a copy of Father Mike Manning's booklet, The Psalms. It will help you to understand the 150 Psalms better as he has categorized them. He uses the technique of Acts. Adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Get your copy today and know the categories. Learn to pray with the Psalms. Call the number on the screen or email us. You can also get it through our website. Get your copy today. Thanks for rejoining us. Our guest today is soon to be Deacon David Arias, who was involved as a young man in Satanism, his escape and what he is looking forward to in the future. David, welcome back. Thank you. When, um, when you got back to Christ, when you got back to the church, how did you keep yourself from lapsing back into the old life? It was a battle. It was hard. It's, it's nothing easy to, to escape um, because, again, you know, you have spirits. You was uh, caused to demons in your life. So it was a battle. It wasn't until I get the, uh, my exorcist when I was free in reality. So did you go through a formal exorcism? Yes. 
Yes. Oh. I remember the movie, The Exorcist. <laughs> Did your head spin around? Did you? Wow. How long a process was that? Three days. Three days? Yes. And did you actually have the, the physical feeling of demons leaving? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. We have to remember that um, the demons are spirits. Yeah. So the, the, you have the, 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 the ability to feel when they get out from you. Mm -hmm. Christ himself cast out demons. Amen. Amen. So we know that. Uh, who, anybody in particular was helpful to you? Was it a priest, a friend, somebody else in the church? Well, after, after my process, uh, uh, Christ was really uh, wonderful with me. And then I met my wife. Uh -huh. um, well, that time was my, my friend and then my girlfriend and then she and then be my, my wife. And uh, she was helping me through the process. And she was um, somehow paying the consequences because it was like, again, you know, it was a process of, of liberation and, and, and changing um, your style of life. Uh, and, and especially too, because I was still addicting to the cocaine. So it was kind of difficult. Um, uh, thanks to God, I never, I never went to any clinic. Uh, help, um, the help came from heaven and my wonderful wife they helped me to get out from, from drugs. And, um, and she was a great, uh, it was a really inspiration um, because she was, she was accepting me the way it was. And, and I guess that part played a big role because I, like I say, I was looking for, belong to someone, to something. I wanna be loved. And she was loving me the way I was and she was accepting me the way I was. And she was helping me and she was introducing me more and more and more to Christ because she was uh, a, a, a Catholic. She was in the Jew uh, ministry. Um, she was in serving in the church. So she was helping me a lot talking about God, even though it was kind of difficult for me because um, again, fighting with spirits and and it wasn't easy but god has a plan and she was really into prayer to help me uh, later on i find out that my my mother-in-law tell me that my wife was praying the rosaries every single night for me and her prayer was lord if David wasn't, if David is not for me, take it away. But don't let him go away from you. That was my wife's prayer. That's beautiful. And Lord, the Lord was really merciful, not only with me, he was merciful with my wife because not only brought me to him, but she, he brought me to my wife too. Do you have children? We had three. We had three. We had three beautiful blessings. I have three kids with special needs, and it's another another blessing it, having kids with special needs, because they teach you to be humble, they teach you to see the grace of the Lord in a daily basis, and they teach you to be in earth, down to earth, uh, to teach you to see that God is in the simplicity. God is in 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 in, in, in simple stuff. Sometimes we want to see miracles. We want to see uh, uh, big things happening, but God, all, uh, God works in the simplicity. It, 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 a hug, a kiss. How old, how old are your children? The oldest is 15 years old, and then 13 and nine. Well, you got your hands full. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So when you're in the studying in the diaconate, um, how much time do you devote to that? Is that a full time or can you split it up between regular work and family life and so forth? Yes, uh, we have a formation every, every other weekend. We spend a weekend on the formation. And then my wife and I, we have a ministry we call Agape. 
which is a ministry to help parents with special needs. Right. Uh, and the goal is to teach the parents that uh, having a kid with special need is not a punishment from God. It's a blessing from God. And we want them to find out that God give us the, the strength, the knowledge, and the tools to form and to, uh, to help these kids. Are they able to go to school? Yes, yes. I have, actually, right now they're in home because they're currently with the flu. But yes, they go to school. Uh, they're uh, wonderful kids. And what about uh, religious education for the children? They had the sacraments already. Uh -huh. They had the sacraments already. Thanks to God, um, they have the first communion and they do the confirmation already. So I cannot ask for more. <laughs> My kids are in the right path. Yeah. And they are really good Christians. They, they do, uh, they have really um, love for Christ. My daughter, who is the oldest, she's a Down syndrome, and she has a great devotion for the Holy Sacrament. She has a, a great devotion for the Holy Sacrament. Actually, when we go to the chapel, uh, she is the one that she goes to the front of the um, tabernacle and she lay down. Wow. To the Lord, yes. And I never teach that. That's amazing. Yes, she knows, she knows who's the Lord. <laughs> I know through my past experience with uh, people with Down syndrome uh, and other disabilities through Special Olympics, yes. that those children, especially at a young age, are so just on the nose, real, there's no, nothing false about them. The love that they express is, uh, it's heartwarming. You know, we, you and I, we have the, the sense of, of sin. We know when we sin. They don't. Yeah. They don't have any malicious in, in, in their conscience. They, yeah. they don't do nothing because they want to hurt. You know, they want to hug. They, they're, they clean. They're pure. Yeah. So uh, the Lord says, you know, those that are clean of the heart, they're going to see the Lord. So they have a one to one to the Lord. <laughs> so I, again, you know, I, can, I cannot be more blessed of having my kids. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience. When you uh, finish and when you're ordained deacon, what, uh, what do you aspire to do? What kind of work? I want to be the face of the church to the parents with special needs. They need to know that the church are with them and the church are welcome them. Most of the parents, they feel like the church is not there. And not because the church, they don't want to help. It's because it's another dimension. They don't know how to deal with kids with special needs. And it's, it's not the church fault. It's basically, we don't know how to work with it. We don't know how to deal with that. It's, it's like us parents. Uh, when they tell us that our daughter was uh, Down syndrome, it was a big shock because we don't know what was the Down syndrome, what, what to do with that, how you deal with Down syndrome kids. So it, the same situation happens in the society, the same situation happens in the church. So um, my main goal, and I'm asking the Lord to help me in this, is that I want to be the face of the church and I want them to feel that the church are, is there to support them and their faith and walk with them in faith. When I was a child, um, one of my best friends had a sister who was Down syndrome, but she was away, put away in an institution. Mm. President Kennedy's sister was put away yes. in an institution. True. So in that era, people with Down syndrome were defects. True. And now today, thank God, we, we find that people with Down syndrome and other illnesses are valuable assets, not only to support our, our lives, they co-mingle with community, they're not looked upon as dummies, and things are, are getting better. Your experience with uh, Satanism has anybody from that old cult ever contacted you and tried to say, oh, come on? <laughs> no, no, I had to move away from uh, San Fernando Valley 
um, I had to basically change. I was having a long hair, <laughs> mm -hmm. so I, I changed basically my right. parents. In, in, but in you know that this is still going on, and yes. it is dangerous and should be avoided at all costs, and don't um, get a look to God to help you stay out of it and so forth. Yes. Uh, are, are you working now? You have a regular job as well as? Yeah, my, my, my work right now is uh, helping parents, again, uh, with yeah. kids with special needs. That's yeah. my job right now. Wow. It's amazing that the devil has so much power. And I'd like to just pray for you a minute <laughs> about God, please. Uh, send your angels to defeat Satan and all his evil spirits. You know, we're all in need of your, your, your love and support. And we'd like to ask your support, too, also for people that you may know who have had that experience, and also support for this program, because every time you tune in, you're going to learn something that will make your life better. Do you want to fall in love with God? I'm sure we all want to. The book of Psalms contains the directions. Thousands of years ago, people like you and me talked to God out of the depths of their hearts, revealing an intimate love. Psalms are the expression of the faith in God by people around 3,000 years ago. God was not a mere abstract creator, but was present involved, and a real person of power and emotions. Now, when we read or listen to the Psalms, we can know the intensity of this love. Entering into the influence of the Psalms, we can find a path to know and love God. To know more about the Psalms, you should get a copy of Father Mike Manning's booklet, The Psalms. It will help you to understand the 150 Psalms better as he has categorized them. He uses the technique of acts, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication. Get your copy today and know the categories. Learn to pray with the Psalms. Call the number on the screen or email us. You can also get it through our website. Get your copy today.